is uh, eating uh, soy products uh, because of the phytoestrogens, is it in any way dangerous for young boys? So, what do you think? At very high levels, it can be. The dose makes the poison. Um, if you think about phytoestrogens, most of them are very weak, and I'm not scared of them in general. And I have two young boys as well, and they, you know, they do have soy products. Um, there is a difference between heavily refined soy products. There's several, several specific phytoestrogens, of which in podcasts uh, in the next couple of months I will go into deep detail with. But phytoestrogens um, can affect your estrogenic profile, but they are also agonists, um, so they bind receptors that you have. The estrogen receptor receptors are much more complicated than the androgen receptor. Maybe similar to how females are more complicated than males. But uh, your androgen receptor, you only have one. It's on your X chromosome. You get it from your mother. If you're female, you have two, two X chromosomes. The estrogen receptors, you have estradiol receptor alpha, beta, ERR alpha, ERR beta, ERR gamma. A lot of phytoestrogens bind the estradiol-related receptors or even the membrane estradiol receptor, which is a different one. And these are similar receptors that usually weak estrogens bind. For example, if you give... Um, a very low dose of estrone, which is a bioidentical estrogen, to a male child, if it is a low enough dose, there won't be any clinically significant negative effect. And then, of course, you have to think about what is this individual's baseline estrogenic signaling? So if they tend to, low, to, tend to run low on estrogenic signaling, then um, increasing estrogenic signaling might, will likely actually be a healthy thing for them to do. For example, alcohol is a known um, upregulator of aromatase, and you'll have a lot more estrogenic signaling if you drink alcohol. But um, even alcohol use for people that have relatively high estrogen does not always lead to estrogenic side effects. So long answer, I'm not very scared of phytoestrogens. Xenoestrogens, um, certainly things like bisphenol A or phthalates would be concerning, um, especially during childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the last decade here uh, in Europe, the, it has been a, um, yeah, a tendency to give the young children uh, all kinds of soy products because you talked about yeah, high versus a low dose, but what's really low or high dose, right? Uh, a, a lot of moms uh, are avoiding dairy products because maybe of the hormones in dairy, uh, but they are changing all the dairy for uh, soy yogurt, soy milk. They give all kinds of soy products to the young children, uh, the boys as well. So I, I always uh, ask myself the question, will this hinder the male development in those teenage years of boys maybe? At some dose, the dose certainly makes the poison. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like that's an awful lot. Uh, many people know that I am a huge advocate of a healthy, balanced diet with as many whole foods as possible, especially in children. And even with my own children, I give them um, uh, like lots of dairy from a local dairy. And we eat the eggs from our own pasture raised chickens and we eat our own chickens as well. And they love uh, red meat from uh, the local grass fed beef. And I feed them bone marrow and I feed them liver. So um, there's certainly a lot of benefits for things like uh, red meat, high iron foods, particularly foods high in zinc, micronutrient rich foods. Mm -hmm. and um, dairy as well for kids. Dairy is great um, if, of, of course, uh, at a tolerable level because it can help improve growth signaling in children. Yeah, same here. I'd rather uh, avoid soy products than uh, avoiding dairy, really. So, um, yeah, and probably it's the same answer for adult men. Uh, soy products, it will not really negatively affect their testosterone levels. Certainly not in normal doses. Correct. Most concerning in men that already struggle with significant estrogen dominance. And then in that case, the therapeutic approach would likely be decreasing uh, use of things like alcohol or uh, decreasing body fat percentage or insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of soy products influencing um, the development of uh, teenage girls? Maybe they go uh, earlier into puberty because of the estrogens. Have you had cases? This is very debatable. I would, I have not, I've seen a lot of cases of precocious puberty and borderline precocious puberty in both males and females, but um, it is very hard to isolate 
the cause because of high consumption of soy products. It does seem like it could be, that it can be clinically significant or contribute. However, think about it as just like a, a small bundle of straws on the camel's back. It's not the, it's not the main driver. Personally, I think the main driver is metabolic syndrome, even in children that perhaps don't quite meet the uh, cutoff for childhood obesity. It's done by standard deviations. It, it's class one, class two, class three. But in a lot of cases, you're detecting um, non-alcoholic hepatitis or fatty liver disease. You're detecting high visceral body fats in children before puberty. And when that's the case, there's several hormones. The main ones that are the adipose brain connection are leptin, adiponectin, um, ghrelin, um, those are, are some of them, but leptin in particular is known to be an agonist at a G protein coupled receptor in the hypothalamus that increases GNRH release. So that um, theoretically and also like uh, through retrospective cohort studies, we know that an increase in that signaling is likely to be one of the main contributors and um, proliferation of that body fat tissue is, uh, in my opinion, kind of like the main offender and one of the main things that uh, should be targeted. All that being said, I'm a bit biased. I'm a I'm obesity medicine physician. That's what I'm board certified in. So that's what I'm very passionate about. Sure. Yeah, I certainly have the personal impression that uh, puberty comes earlier, uh, especially for girls nowadays, if I compare to yeah 30 years ago. That's my impression. Yeah, it's very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but obesity is rising up uh, in comparison to 30 years ago uh, in children as well. So mm -hmm. that's a correlation probably.